Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God. Oh, God, you are worthy to be praised, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I lift you up, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus God. I magnify your name, oh God. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. God, I glorify you, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus God. You are the faithful friend, oh Lord, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are the faithful father, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, God, you are worthy in all of your ways, oh God. Oh God, you are perfect in all of your ways, oh God. Oh God, you are magnificent, oh God. I just want to send up a praise unto your name. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God, I thank you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, oh God, I worship you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, oh God, I just thank you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, oh God, I just exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, you are worthy to be praised, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, my God. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh God. Yes, God, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, you have your way, oh God, in this place on today, oh God. Have your word on today, have your way on today, oh Lord God. Holy Spirit, have your way in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. You are mighty, oh God. You are great, oh God. Oh God, you are awesome, oh God. Hallelujah is the highest praise, oh God. I worship and I adore you, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the river king. You're seated in majesty. Hallelujah. You are the risen King. Listen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord God. You are worthy, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are worthy, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, as I stand in your presence, Lord God, I declare, oh God, that you are great, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are awesome, Lord God. You are mighty, oh God. You are wonderful, oh God. God, you are all powerful, oh God. God, you know everything, oh God. You see everything, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. I just want to pray, oh God, and I just ask, Lord God, that you would just have your way, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, you are worthy, Lord God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Lord God. Holy Spirit, give me the words to speak to your people on today. Hallelujah, Lord God. Give me the wisdom, God. God, give me the understanding, God. Give me the knowledge, Lord God. God, to speak to your people, Lord God, the way that you have... Help me to do so, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. And I pray, Lord God, that this word, Lord God, God, that it reach who it needs to reach, God. I pray, God, that this word, God, touch the hearts and the lives of the people that it needs to touch, oh God. And I pray a blessing, Lord God, over your people, God. God, that they shall reign in victory, O oh Lord, because you reign in victory, O oh Lord. And if you reign in victory, O oh Lord, they shall be seated with you, O oh Lord God. We shall be seated with you, O oh Lord God. No matter what it seems, no matter what the enemy tries to present to us, O oh Lord God. God, we know your word. God, we know, God, that we reign in victory, O oh God. God, we know, O oh God, God, that we are seated in heavenly places, O oh God. God, we know, O oh God, that we don't have to fret, O oh God. God, we know, O oh God, that we can look to the left or the right, oh God, but God, nothing got on our left, God, nothing on our right, Lord God, should hinder us, oh God, but we shall continue to move forward in you, oh Lord Jesus. 
And we should not move and operate in fear in the name of Jesus Christ. And we should not allow fear to hold us back. But we will keep going and we will take off like a rocket, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, have your way, oh God. God, breathe, 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 God. On the words, God, that I shall speak, God, that shall come from you, God. Breathe, God, on this video, God. Breathe on the lives of your people, Lord God. In the lives of your people, Lord God. Near and far, Lord God. Got the subscribers, God, to Royal Dominion Authority, Lord God. Breathe in their life, Lord God. God, do it, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So, I wasn't planning on coming on on today. I didn't come on on last week because God told me to rest. I wasn't planning on coming on today. I did plan on coming on sometime this week, but I just really did not know when. But I had a dream on last night and, and you know, the dream, I felt it was about me because in the dream, it was me as like the main person and like people that I knew was in the dream in a familiar place that I knew of was in the dream. So initially I knew the dream was about me, but God told me to come on and share with you all as well, because this may be for somebody. The word may be for somebody. And if it's for you, go ahead and take it to the Lord God and ask God what, you know, seek the Lord, you know, test the spirit and you test the spirit by seeing if it's in the word of God, seeing if it's in the word of God and so that's all. Yeah, test the spirit and, and just see what God will say about this concerning your situation if you feel like it's for you. Even if it may not be for you, certain parts may be for you because it is an encouraging word. Again, still take it to God because God may want to give you more. That's the reason that God gives us these platforms is that we come and share with you all so that you could see. Seek God for your own personal selves, for your own personal matters and whatever it is that, you know, you are seeking God or whatever it is that God wants to reveal to you because we are living in the New Testament times where God says that you don't have to look to man for a word. You don't have to depend on them for a word. God is making a way that the veil has been torn so you can go to God for yourself and God wants a, a personal relationship with you. So if I can encourage you, you know, when you hear this word, take it to the Lord in prayer and see what the Lord says concerning your situation. Um, but in this dream, it was me and I was in a familiar place. It was actually an old place, like an old residence where I used to stay at, like, and it was a family residence. And in the dream, it was like people in my family in the dream and in the dream, it was like small, small rodents. It was like uh, like a small rat. I can't remember if it was like more than one rat, but I remember it being like a rat and the rat was like small. And it was like two or three pigs in the dream. But I feel like it was the same one pig, but it just kept coming back. And, and they were small. They wasn't like regular size pig. You know, of course, a rat is small anyways, but the pig, it was not like a big regular size pig. They were like tiny pigs. Like they were like, they was like probably like this small, but they kept coming to me like the pigs. The rat was just around. And we know that the rat represents like uncleanliness and filth and it could represent two it don't necessarily have to rep it depends on the context of the dream. It don't ne necessarily have to be uncleanliness or but it does represent like filth and uncleanliness, but it represents like a demon trying to possess your things, trying to come and possess your things or take over your things with uncleanliness and filth. And they trying to take your virtues away. That's what the rodent represents. And we know that a pig represents uncleanliness as well. It's, uh, it's an untestable, undetestable animal or detestable, however you say that word, but the animal is detestable. So it's unclean, right? It, so I'm not going to get into that because that's not what the dream is about. But the pig is unclean. And in the dream, the rat was like in the area. We were in the house. And in the particular house, it's the living room. And it's, I think it was one, two, three, four bedrooms, two bathrooms. So a living room, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, just a regular average size house, right? And it was like everywhere that I went, the pig, 
the baby pig, it was like this small. It kept coming towards me and presenting itself try, as like a like trying to scare me. And in the dream, I remember being fearful, you know, because the way it was presented to me, like this pig, it kept coming to me, not trying to like eat me, but trying to like harm me, like it was trying to bite me or harm me or like attack me or whatever like that. And I remember in the dream that it was a rat and the rat never really did anything to me, but it was like the pig, it like tried to attack me and harm me everywhere that I went. And the people that was in the dream, it was like certain certain people that I knew, family members, they weren't really doing anything to protect me. They was kind of like just thick sitting around or standing around. They were kind of like laughing, but not like, ah, ha, 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 ha. But it was kind of like laughing, like it wasn't like a big deal. Like every time this pig came to try to attack me, they didn't really do anything. Like it, they they were just there really basically they were just people that was in a dream that was there right so when i woke up i was like okay god what's going on and this was this morning so mind you i'm at work the whole time trying to figure out what's going on right and god is saying let me go to my notes because i was taking notes while i was at work while the Holy Spirit was like downloading to me like I was working at the same time. But, you know, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me as well because I was trying to gain understanding as to what was going on. And God is saying, don't go back. Don't look back. I know we hear this word all the time. I know we hear this encouraging word or an encouraging message all the time of not going back. But God said, don't go back. The old place, the old home and the relatives that were in the home necessarily don't mean that they were against me but god is saying don't go back to your old place of living right don't go back to the old place of doing things don't go back to your old ways of thinking or your old ways of believing things because god is taking you to new ground he's taking you to new territory that home represented territory and land and God is saying, don't go back to an old territory that he has already brought you from. Don't go back to old fears that he has already delivered you from and pulled you out of. Don't go back to old situations that God has delivered you and pulled you from out of. God says it's not worth it. God says he has made you on purpose. And when God began to give me this word, when the Holy Spirit began to speak to me this morning, this was like two hours ago while I was at work. Now I'm on my lunch break. I began to think of the song Royalty by Tasha Cobb. It's one of her um, recent songs that she came out with on her mo most recent album. And in the song, she's talking about how we were created, how we were wonderfully and fearfully created in the image of God and how we are royalty. And the enemy does not want us to know our true purpose and our true identity. And even though we may do know it and we are may be walking in it, some people may have to, you know, God may be, it, it may seem like your world has been shaken up, but God is lighting a match under your feet for you to keep, get to moving. It may seem like your world is shaken up because God is stirring up the gift and God has sent me on today to stir up the gift that is on the inside of you and to lay hands on you virtually and to speak to that gift that is on the inside of you, that it will be stirred up in the grace, in the, in, in, in the, in, in God, so that whatever it is that God has called you to do shall be manifested. We are the manifestations of the son of God, the sons of God. We are the manifestations of God. And in order for us to manifest and be manifested into the likeness of God, we have to walk, live, create, think, move, and be in purpose. And God says, I made you on purpose. God says to go forward because the enemy that you see isn't real. The enemies that were in my dream are not real. They're just a facade. They came just to make me fearful. They came just to, because everywhere that I went, it was like every place that I went in the house, the pigs was coming to attack me, right? And God's saying everywhere that you are going in your life, the enemy, it seems like the enemy is attacking you. But God says, don't pay attention to the attacks. I mean, notice that there is an attack because that's what we have to do. We have to notice what's going on, right? So in Revelations 12, in 12, it says, therefore, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. So you you may see things, right? And it may look like an attack towards you, and it may be an attack towards you, or it just may be a tactic towards you to get you to move but to get you to move in the places that you're not supposed to be. Because in this dream, I was going from like one room to the next room to the next room, trying to get away from this demon possessed pig, right? And God is saying, yeah, it's okay to move and get away from them. But when you move, don't move in fear, right? God is saying, speak to that mountain, speak to those enemies, speak to those demons, speak to, the, to Satan, speak to your circumstances, because your circumstances have to turn around. Oh, Satan, if you resist him, he shall flee. God is saying, don't go back to the old places. If your old place of living is fear, don't go back to those fears. If God is taking you from one place, one territory, one, one, one position, one home to the next, God is saying, don't look back in fear. Don't go and try to dwell in those same areas that God has delivered you from in fear. Many of us, God has placed something special on the inside of us. It's gonna, and it's going to take a whole lot of faith. It's going to take a certain type of faith. In order for us to actually put our best foot forward and step into the very thing that we were so fearful of. Right? Like me, I just started cooking on YouTube, I think last week or last week before. And God had been speaking to me about this for about a year now, but he had gave me the idea years ago, right? About a, a business in the in the um in the culinary industry, right? But it wasn't until last week until I took my first step in recording myself cooking. And yeah, I had a hiccup when I was cooking on that video, but God says, that's fine. Keep going. Don't look back at your mistakes. Don't look back at your past fears. Don't look back at those things that may try to hinder you. They're all a facade, God says, but you shall use those as stepping stones. God says to use those as stepping stones, right? God says those demons, they have no real power. They have no real value. They have no real substance. Because the enemy know that his time is up. If he only have a short time to go and he going to try each and everything to try to get us to be fearful of whatever he's presenting to you. God says, keep moving forward. In my dream, yeah, I operated in fear. When I woke up, I felt bad. But God says, that's fine. But you just got to keep going. Keep going. Don't sit in fear. Don't dwell in it. Whatever your fear may be. God says, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. That's it. Keep moving forward. God says, the, the enemies, the fear, the circumstances that causes you to look back or causes you to want to go back or cause you to want to stand in that place and not move forward because you're afraid. But when you think about the very thing that you are afraid of, when you think about what's on the other side of that fear, then you're going to want to put your best foot forward. God says they are trying to hold on to you. Fear is trying to grip you. Your, your present circumstances that you're in that may be causing you a delay or a distraction, or it may be causing you to stay stagnant. It may be causing you to not take that step forward. God says that it is, is, it is going to hold you back. You're not going to be able to propel. You're not going to be able to leap. You're not going to be able to, to, to soar in the spirit. You're not going to be able to soar higher than what the enemy wants you to because you're going to allow this thing, this circumstance, this fear, whatever it may be to hold you. God says, no, you can't be held in this season. My child, you are my child. You can't be held back in this season. You can't be held bound in bondage to whatever it is that's trying to grip you. God says, yeah, I got the power to shake things up. I got the power to move mountains out the way, but I need you to operate in the power I gave you. Fear is not of you because fear is not of me, says God. I have given you, I have not given you um, a mind of fear, but I've given you power, love, and a sound mind, right? 
That's what God is speaking to me. So I be having to ask God sometimes, God, what are my fears? And God will reveal them to me. And then it's up to me to take the step to walk, to take a leap of faith, right? God is saying, look forward, look forward, because guess what? You're at the finish line. It may look not look like it, but you're almost at the finish line or you're standing right at the finish line and you about to cross over. God says victory. Listen, come on. The race have already been won and victory is in your court, says God. God says you have to praise him right now. Go ahead and shout hallelujah. When I first got on this, um, when I first hit record, what was I do? Praising God. Because guess what? I don't know what I'm up against. I don't know what, what the enemy has up against me, but I'm going to praise God in the midst of it because it's in my praise that I shall see victory. It's in my praise that I shall be delivered. It's in my praise that I shall be redeemed. It's in my praise that I shall be healed. It's in my praise that I shall see God in the name of Jesus is in your praise, God says. Don't sit in the old place. God is trying to take you to the new place. And even if you don't see it, God says, praise me in the midst of it. If you got to praise me in the hallway, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. God says you are his masterpiece. God has made you and he's still making you. God is taking his paintbrush and he's taking what they call the thing. The, 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 the thing with the different palettes of paint and he's taking his paintbrush and he's dipping his paintbrush into his palette and he's painting on the easel what he will have for you in this season. God says, keep going. Don't give in. Don't sit down. Keep moving. Yes, I'm going to give you rest in this season because, because listen, when, when, when God gave Eve to Adam, God put Adam to rest. God put his soul to rest so that he could rest. And when he woke up, his wife was right in front of his face. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God said, I'm going to give you rest before I give you the promise. So don't grow weary in your well doing. I want to bless you, but I want you to know that you have to keep going, says God. God says, don't let the things you see make you feel perfect. Don't make, don't let the things you see, the circumstances, the hard times, the hard places, the desolate places. God says those things are only put there for you to, to gain momentum, for you to operate in strength, for you to build your muscle, for you to have a testimony. God says, don't let the things that you see, come on, with your physical eyes. See, we see a lot of times we see in the natural, but we're not trying to see in the spirit because we're not trying to be deep. But God says the things you see in the natural, don't let those things you see in the natural take you away from your purpose. God is taking his time on you. Come on. And he's creating you as his masterpiece. Come on. God says don't go down the slippery slurp, slope. Don't go down the slippery slope. Come on. Come on. Because when you at the tip and you make that wrong turn or that wrong look back, or you reach out your hand for that very thing that you know you're not supposed to have and you take it and it, and it feel good, it tastes good and it sounds good to you right there in a the moment. When you fall, it's a slippery slope and it's hard to come back up. Right. God says, don't go down that route. Don't don't look back. Don't think back. Don't even think back. Sometimes we can see ourselves thinking back. Sometimes we can see ourselves reminiscing. God says, keep going. Those are tactics of the enemy to trick you. Come on. God says, don't allow your insecurities to cause you to fear. A lot of people have insecurities and that causes fear. God says, whatever you're insecure in, give it to him. I don't know who this is for. I don't know. I have my own insecurities. But God is using this platform for me not to be prophesying to people, but for me to use my testimony and pieces of me to bring to y'all to let y'all know, hey, I am. Listen, I have overcome. I'm still overcoming and you can overcome, too. This is not just about me prophesying the word and, 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 and getting off. No, this is about encouragement in the Lord. Come on. I am a witness that God can do it. I am a witness that he will do it. I am a witness that it, it has been done. 
I have seen miracles in my life. And when I think about that, I think about the Red Sea being split. I have seen miracles in my life. I've seen where God has brought me out. I've seen where God has delivered me. I've seen where he has grown me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I have seen where God has changed my life. And guess what? He's still changing me because I'm not perfect. I still have my shortcomings. I still sometimes have my doubts. I still sometimes have my insecurities. I still sometimes have fear that I have to step over, fear that I have to speak to, fear that I have to bind up, fear that I have to speak to the face of Satan and say that he will not take anything that belongs to me. We are in a spiritual battle and Satan is trying to take everything or everybody that he possibly can. And he's using his tactics. He's using his imps. He's using his witches and his warlocks. He's using his, 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 his dirty, dark spirits to try to overcome us and conquer us, but it shall not be done. It ain't going to work. God says, I have made you fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of me. You are my masterpiece, says God. Hallelujah. 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 You got to speak to the enemy and say, no, you will not have my life. You are a liar, but I won't be deceived by you, devil. I had to tell him that this morning. Because I don't know what he, he got planned. But guess what? My God is bigger and my God is greater. And my God is wiser. And Jesus is on my side. And I am led by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We got to pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us. God says he will make a way in the wilderness for us. He has made ways in the wilderness for us. Time and time again, but don't go back. Don't allow your wilderness season to take you back. Let your wilderness season push you forward. Come on. Let your hard times push you forward. Let the uh, let the pit take you to the palace. Come on. Let the pit push you to the palace. Let the pit motivate you to want to be in the palace. Not in your old territory. Yeah, you thrived in your old territory. You overcame your old territory, but you don't want to stay there. You want to get the newness of God. Behold, I am doing a new thing, says God. You want to get the new things of God. Because guess what? When the un Come on. In Mark 11 and 24 through 28, 26, I mean, it says when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest. And finding none. And he says, I will return to my house from which I came. God says those pigs in the dream had already been driven out. But because, in verse 25 it says, and when he comes, he find it swept and put in order. Then he goes and take with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in the well there in the last state of that man is worse than the first. God revealed to me, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that those pigs in the dream that were trying to attack me, those small little demons that was trying to attack me were already driven out. They were already, God had already cleaned and swept me out. And they were mad because I built up my faith to not allow them to enter in back into me. And they was attacking me on the opposing side. God says, you may see affliction. But it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's not because God don't love you. It's not because you're not worthy because you are. You're seeing affliction. Why? Because you allow God to cleanse you. You're giving God you. You're, you're submitting yourself to God as his holy vessel to continue to clean and purify you. Don't fall to, don't fall to the enemy's tactics. Look, over the weekend, God had me to organize my closet. He had me to organize my clothes. I have clothes and bins. I have I have shoes. I had so many shoes to the point where I had to stop keeping them organized. I just would just throw them in the closet. And God said, no, this weekend, you're going to give away shoes that you don't need. And you're going to organize your closet with your shoes and your clothes or else. When we begin to do the work of God, the work of God is anything that God tells us to do, right? Any task God gives us and he and we know that it is of God. God told me to organize this weekend. So I took that time to organize. 
It took me a few hours because I wanted just the way God told me to do it. God told me to do it in a speci very specific and a strategic way. Right? When God is telling you to start organizing and to start cleaning up and to start doing certain things, God, that means God is cleansing you. He's not only cleansing your physical home, he's cleansing your, your spiritual home because guess what? He has to dwell there. So when the enemy comes to attack you, don't look at that as you've done something wrong or you feel like you're in over your head and you're drowning. That are, those are just tactics because he knows that you've driven him out of all the places that he may try to dwell. And that's, that means that God's hands is on your life and God is working in you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed, God says. Because this dream, when I woke up this morning, I was kind of getting discouraged. I kind of was discouraged when I woke up a little bit. Because I'm like, God, I'm, I'm trying to do everything right. I know I'm not perfect, but I live a life that's holy. Yeah, I may say cuss words in my head. And sometimes they may slip up probably twice a month. <laughs> you know, sometimes I may have an unpure or unclean thought. Or I may have a heart of pride sometimes, you know, but but God is saying, I've cleaned you out. You're not perfect. So sometimes you're going to slip up sometimes. But God says, when you could, when you let me mold you and shape you, you're going to see affliction and it's going to come from the opposing side. But it's nothing that you've done wrong. Keep going. That means you're doing everything right. No, you're not perfect. But that means you're doing, you're striving to be pleasing unto God. In a way that he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Not pleasing just of your works, but pleasing of your deeds in the ways of your heart. God says, when you when you make up your mind to give me you, yeah, you're still going to see the enemy. But God says, keep going. That's the enemy's job. Keep going, God says. Keep going, God says. Because when you move in faith, it ain't nothing that the enemy will try to do towards you. It ain't nothing that the enemy going to do towards you, I'm sorry, that's going to hinder your process. That's going to stop your growth. Because he don't have the power he think he have. And you got to just cast him down, cast him down, cast him down. Because he got to bow at Jesus. He got to bow at Jesus' feet. Cast them down by the authority of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus. Every power that he's working against, every power that he's using to work against. Whether it be people, whether it be circumstances, whatever it may be. It's the spirit behind the thing and you got to cast that spirit down. Don't give the spirit power. That's what God is saying. Go forward. Don't give the oppressive spirit, any power, right? Because the pigs, they want, they want a place. Their spirit wants a place to dwell. But they could not dwell in me. I kept going. I kept going away from them. Even though they kept following me, trying to attack me, they could not dwell in me. God says when he drive out unclean spirits from your vessel, from, from you, they're going to try to come back seven ways or ways greater than how they was in the beginning because they feel like that that's their home. But God says, I have swept and cleaned you out. Don't give them no power to reside in you no more and go forward, says God. And that's all. Whoever this word is for, go ahead and take it to God. I know that this was a great word for me. And I know that this is an encouraging word, not just for myself, but for somebody out there. You know, somebody feels like, you know, God, I'm seeing all these issues. I'm seeing all this affliction and I'm trying to figure out what I've done wrong. When I'm trying to do everything right, God says, keep striving to do, be your best self in me. Says God. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't give up on climbing the mountain. Don't give up on speaking to the mountain. Don't give up on me, says God. I'm not going to give up on you. You are royalty. Come on.
Tasha Cobb said it in her song to remind us that we are royalty. Go and listen to the song. Y'all, you are royalty, says God. I created you. And the enemy is mad because I created you. But don't give him any space to live or dwell. And don't dwell in the old place because I'm taking you to a new place and I'm giving you new territory, says God. Go forward. Go forward and conquer, says God. Listen, if you are new to Royal Dominion Authority, this is a community where we strive to live by the means of God, where we strive to add value to the lives of others, the same value that the Lord adds to our life by his word. We strive to add that same value to the lives of others. Listen, and if you have people in your life that's not adding value, God says, get rid of them. Hey, it's time to ask some people, what are you here for? Come on. Like those people in a the dream, they weren't adding no kind of value at all. It could be anybody. God says people have to, they have to level up in your life. If they want to be a part of your life, they got to level up. If they don't want to level up, guess what? You got to you gotta leave them where they at, pray for them, and check on them later. When you get to a point where you're strong enough in God. Because God says this is not the time to go back. This is not the time to stay in the old places with the old people. That's not trying to do nothing with their old self. Keep going, says God. Listen, if you are new. And you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell notification so that you could receive notifications when I go live and when I um do uploads. You won't miss a beat. Come on. You won't miss a beat. I don't want you to miss what God is doing on this channel. God is most definitely doing new things. And I don't want, want y'all to miss anything that God is doing. Um, If you are not new, you've been rocking with me for a while. Uh, thank you so much. I welcome you back and I welcome all the newcomers as well. Listen, y'all, please send a like up. Let me know that you agree with me that the enemy ain't got no control over us. We bound the enemy. He don't bound us. Go ahead and like the video. Go ahead and share the video. If you feel like someone may need to hear this as an encouraging word, come on, go forward, says God. Go forward, says God. Go forward to the new place. The race has been won, says God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and comment. Give me a testimony. Let me know that you overcame this week. Let me know that you overcame one of your fears. Come on, let me know that you overcame. Let me know that Satan has no rule over you. Let me know that Satan has no dominion over you. This is royal dominion authority. Well, we walk and dominion authority under the leadership of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we walk with our heads held high. We walk, come on, not by faith. I mean, we walk in faith and not by sight. Sorry. We walk in faith and not by sight. We walk not by faith, but we walk in sight. Come on. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by what we know to be true. And that's the word of God. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. God says, walk boldly. Walk with confidence. Don't walk in fear. Walk knowing and trusting in the word of God and stand. Come on. Stand on the word of God and believe what God says. I love y'all. 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 God says you are an overcomer. So your, your point says, don't look back. If God has brought you from the old place, number one, if God has brought you from the old place, don't look back. Number two, if he has brought you from the old place, don't look back. Look forward. Look forward. God says to go forward. God says that when you don't look back and when you look forward and go forward, God says you are gaining new ground. You are breaking ground and you are gaining new territory. But first, you got to believe that just because the afflictions may rise up against you or the attacks may rise up against you. It does not mean that you are failing. It means that you are succeeding and you are overcoming the, the spiritual battles. You are an overcomer. Don't look back. Look forward. Go forward. Believe that you are an overcomer. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Walk in victory. Share this word with somebody this week. I believe somebody needs to hear this word 
And if you feel this word for you, listen, praise God in advance. Go ahead and praise God. God is good. God is mighty. God is awesome. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this word reaches to whomever it may reach. I pray that this word goes to the uttermost ends of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this encouraging word. Hallelujah. Y'all be great. Be awesome. Allow God to purify you. Walk in holiness in the name of Jesus Christ. Love God and love the people of God. And there you have mercy, grace, favor, and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall see elevation. You, elevation. you shall see increase in the name of Jesus. I love y'all. Be great.